Hey, 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 what is going on? Brian Bowman here. And today, I want us to go back in time. Imagine, imagine with me, it is early uh, 1600s, early 1600s, and a, uh, a young Galileo is looking out into the sky, and he, uh, he's looking at the moon, and he discovers something that no one else was able to discover. Now, they all have the same telescope, the same technology. In fact, the technology is so behind what we have now, right? It's, uh, it, it's, it, it doesn't have anywhere near the amount of magnification these telescopes need to be able to actually see mountains on the moon. Yet of all the astronomers and everyone who's observing the skies, Galileo is the only one who recognizes there are mountains on the moon. How did he do it? I was I was reading about this and it fascinated me because as soon as I saw it, I said, this is a lesson for us as marketers, as business people, as e-commerce sellers. There's a huge lesson here and it's something that um, all of us can apply. So how did he know that there were mountains? He had a telescope that would not show him uh, the detail, didn't have enough magnification to show him the detail, to show the mountains. All these other astronomers, they're all, they're all using the same technology. They're all looking at the same moon, but they don't see mountains. Yet Galileo sees mountains. And how? Turns out he saw the differences in the light and the dark, the zigzag pattern on the moon and the light and the dark and the shadows and the light. And he knew that's mountains. And how did he know that? Because he had trained not only in the same thing, the same sciences that the other astronomers had trained in, in science and astronomy and, you know, whatever other disciplines, um, but he also trained in art. He was an artist. So he knew this technique to create light and shade, to create uh, to create the look of mountains. So what the heck does that have to do with e-commerce? How can that help us as sellers and as marketers? One of the biggest and probably the most, influ probably one of the top five influential things I was taught early on by my early mentors was going outside of my area of my discipline, my niche, going to other direct and indirect competitors. In our intensive program, one of the first things that we do is called finding your place in the pack. And it's all about understanding buyer personas and who you are, but we also go out and we look at who are your competitors, indirect and, um, and direct. And we also go out to completely unrelated niches. If you are in the fitness niche, I want you to go look at what realtors are doing. It's like, what? If you're, if you're in the supplement niche, I want you to go see what local landscapers are doing. And the reason why, and not just those specific examples, I want you to go totally outside of what you normally look at. And here's why. And uh, Jay Abraham talks about this as well, is when you go out to other niches, if you do what everyone in your circle is doing and everyone in your niche and everyone in your world is doing, you at best can have about a 20% lift in performance from what everyone's doing. But if you go out and study other niches, other marketing strategies, other tactics, other offer creation ideas, other, other things that other niches are doing, and you bring them back into your realm, it's brand new. It's something nobody else is doing, and it completely separates you from the pack. It's such an easy way to separate yourself, and that's how you're going to get multiplicative gains, multiplicative growth. That's where you're going to get creativity and bring new ideas new fresh ideas, you're going to bring them from other places. So the same way that Galileo was able to see mountains when others couldn't because he had gone out and studied other disciplines. He had a, he had a multidisciplinary approach to what he did and he could see things that when others couldn't see, he could see those things because of that training. When you go out and you start looking at other brands and you ask yourself, what's the unique selling proposition of that dry cleaning company? Can I improve it? Does it have one? Is there anything I can take from what they're doing in their marketing from their brick and mortar store and bring it to my online store? Or if you sell, um, if you're in the fitness niche or if you're in the beauty niche and you go out and you see what people in the gardening niche are doing and you subscribe to some different lists. This is one of the first things that I do is I start subscribing to lists of indirect competitors. What I mean by indirect competitors is people that are marketing to my same buyer but a totally different product. We are not directly competing. So you sell yoga mats, they sell um, you know, organic food, let's say. I'm gonna subscribe to that organic food list. I wanna be on that list. I wanna know what kind of things they're talking about, what interests, what, what, their, um, 
you know, how are they connecting with that same person? Because at the end of the day, this is, this will serve you so well if you apply this. If you realize that you're not only competing for the attention of your direct competitors, if you sell those yoga mats, you're not just competing for the attention of other, of your buyers with other yoga mat sellers. You're competing for their attention with everything else and everyone else that's trying to get it. So you're competing with, you know, you sell yoga mats, you're competing with Whole Foods, you're competing with jewelry designers, you're competing with yoga mats, you're competing with supplements, and you're competing with the landscaper who's trying to cut their lawn. So you have to see what else they're doing and you can bring really innovative ideas into your space, things that nobody has tried, get multiplicative gains and let everyone else stare at the moon and not figure out what the heck is going on. So go take a multidisciplinary approach, start seeing what others are doing outside of your niche, bring them in and have those breakthrough ideas in your space. All right, have a great rest of your day. Bye.